Players, how you doing? Welcome back to Players Guide. This episode of Players Guide, I'm going to talk about some of my favorite games and games that maybe should play, maybe shouldn't, who knows, at Halloween. start things off, I'm going to talk about two amazing homebrews. These are some of my favorite homebrews, and I play them every October. I stream them live on Twitch, so check out the Retro Indie Show live at 9 p.m. Eastern Time every Saturday night live on Twitch. I'll be your host, and also consider following the channel and uh, checking out some of the other awesome streamers that we offer throughout the week. I'm talking about the game... Haunted Halloween 85 and Haunted Halloween 86. But first off, let's talk about Haunted Halloween 85. You play as a character named Donnie. You're going out to meet your best girl, Tammy, at the Halloween dance. But unfortunately, evil takes over your town and everybody turns into zombies. There's werewolves. There's crows trying to attack you. Uh, this is a great platforming beat-em-up game. Uh, the controls are solid. The graphics are absolutely beautiful. Uh, this is one of the best NES homebrews that I've played. There's some really good ones. I don't have a top 10 list uh, yet. Maybe I will. Um, but if I did, for sure, both of these games would be on that list. I thoroughly enjoy them and play them year round. But particularly in October, I enjoy playing these games. So Haunted Halloween... Um, my Retrotainment Games returned again with Haunted Halloween 86. That's the follow-up. I'm hoping for an 87 because I really love these games. Now this time, Tammy is a playable character and you can play as two different characters. Um, they are both very similar, but they're still different enough to have their own benefits. And the game's a little bit harder this time around, so being able to swap out between two characters... Uh, one who might be, you know, on their last hit of their life versus one at full health is greatly beneficial. They also introduced in this game a uh, power-up system. As you beat levels, you're able to select different power-ups for your characters, uh, such as Double Jump, which is one that you can get right off the bat. Um, it's great. I really love this game. If you like the first one, you're going to like this one as well. Next up is a game called Chiller. Now... This is a game uh, based off an arcade game that was very violent. Um, there's uh, the first section here. You are trying to shoot a nun with a baby to get the most points to advance. Because let's face it, if you don't, it's really hard to advance past this first stage. Um, otherwise, you're shooting like basically people coming out of the ground. I don't know if they're zombies or what, but there's different limbs here. Um, it's quite gory. There is also the the second stage. There's like some ghosts and spirits and I think like dogs and stuff that you're shooting here in this hallway. And then it, after that, you go to this torture chamber um, where you're blowing parts off of human bodies. And this is um, for the NES. It was unlicensed for obvious reasons. Uh, it's a light gun game, but you can also choose to play it without the light gun. Dr. Chaos is the next one on this list. This is one that I wanted to talk about because it just kind of fits in the category. It's not one that I particularly enjoy, but I'm sure some of you out there do enjoy this one. And this game, for some reason, reminds me of Goonies. I think it's because you have the side-scrolling action platforming i don't know if you really want to call it that in this game but exploration stages and then you go into the first person view of various rooms as you try to navigate your way around this mansion now i've never really commit too much time to this game and because of that i haven't made it terribly far um but that's that's the gist of this game uh it is something that i do plan on putting a little bit more time into one day to give it a better go give it a better chance but from what i can tell it's not the greatest game now here's a game another game that begins with doctor that i do think is half decent and gets a pretty bad rap that's dr jekyll and mr hyde now i think 
most people's initial impressions of this game are that it's terrible. They don't understand uh, what to do or how to play it. Um, and the angry video game nerd has made fun of that for years. And understandably so, the first time I played this game, I had no clue. But because of the internet, I was able to go back to it reading on forums about people who were trying to beat this game and had beat this game because it's a real challenge to make th make it through this game. And what you basically want to do is just avoid everything. That's the goal of this game. And it's actually quite fun once you get going and you develop the skills to just avoid everything. And if you do, if your, your health does deplete, uh, you, you then turn into hide and you're walking sort of backwards through the stages uh, from the end of the stage to the beginning. I believe that's the mechanic here. Um, and then once you reach the point you died, you all of a sudden die. But if you're just picking up the cartridge at random, you're really not going to know that. You either got to have the instruction manual or you have to do some research for yourself online and learn how to play this game. So maybe there's more to Dr. Chaos and I need to give it more of a chance like I did Dr. and Jekyll, Mr. Hyde to really appreciate the game. So I hope you consider revisiting that game because it's definitely worth it. Frankenstein on the NES, this is a hard game to come by. Uh, from my experience, it's very hard to find, very uncommon. And the graphics in this game are very detailed. In some parts, they don't look so great, but in other parts of this game, they really do, especially the cutscenes. The cutscenes, I think, are really great, um, so detailed, um, and the little bits of animation that they add in are exquisite. At first, I found this game really hard to get a hold of, but when I put some time into it, uh, I definitely got better and made some progress with this game. Uh, I haven't beat it, but I have come very close, and I do want to play more of it. Unfortunately, because I'm talking about so many different games and trying to put out so many different videos, I was only able to capture a fraction of the game here, uh, but maybe I will play more of it on stream at some point in October. So again, check out Player's Guide on Twitch. Speaking of other classic horror franchises, let's talk about Dracula. So I think that this is based on the movie uh, because the cutscenes do look like Keanu Reeves and, you know, so does the cover art uh, resemble uh, the movie that came out in the 90s. At the time, I thought it was a pretty good movie. I don't know how well it holds up to today. Maybe I should revisit that. Uh, the game is... My initial impressions were that it wasn't great, but then it kind of grew on me and sucked me in because even though I did die early on in the game... I wasn't willing to accept defeat and decided to push through and carry on and then I did find some enjoyment in the game and wanted to continue. Again, because of time constraints, I uh, didn't make it too far here, but I do want to play more of this game. I have played it before, so there is some enjoyment there. Let's talk about Friday the 13th on the NES. Growing up, I didn't like this game. The map threw me off. It was totally confusing. As an adult, I was able to figure out how to navigate myself around with this map and what to do in the game and where to find items. And now I've found enjoyment and I really do enjoy this game. But looking back, this game really isn't suitable for children to be playing where you're a camp counselor going up against a murderer who's killing children in cabins and you're trying to stop that. Um, this game certainly wouldn't be suitable for children now, but you know, back in the very late eighties and early nineties, um, we were all playing it right. And it was, it was generally more well accepted to play this game than to have been watching any of the Friday the 13th movies. Now let's follow Friday the 13th up with another great eighties slasher franchise, a nightmare on Elm street. I really enjoyed this series. Uh, the movies, I used to enjoy them more than the Friday the 13th movies, but I over time transitioned to enjoy the Friday the 13th more than Nightmare on Elm Street. But the Nightmare on Elm Street game is great. It's an uncommon game, but it's also a four-player game. So if you can get four people together, 
and you can go around the neighborhood visiting different houses that uh, Freddy is in and, and is has possessed. Um, you have to find him in these houses and kill him, but without falling asleep. When you fall asleep, you go into a nightmare world where the enemies are a little bit more powerful. But when you group together with your friends to play a four-player game, it really does feel like you're going up against a strong opponent, Freddy Krueger, just like the kids do in the movies. And I think this one's very enjoyable. Please check it out. Splatterhouse. Although released on the Famicom, uh, I definitely think that this one is worthy of mentioning in this video. I don't know where exactly this falls in the Splatterhouse series. I'm familiar with Splatterhouse on the 360 and the Splatterhouse 2 and 3 on the Sega Genesis, but this one is a much cuter version. Now, it still has a very creepy and dark tone to it. And as you can see by some of the seeds here, it's another game that references some classic cult horror movies. Uh, but the level design is really cool. There's a lot going on in this game. So let's jump right to Ghoul School. Uh, Ghoul School is one that you don't hear too much about. It's kind of a weird game. You're walking around in a school hitting different monsters with a baseball bat um, now I remember my friend Phil playing this game and he got a lot of enjoyment out of it unfortunately I wasn't able to it just seems very repetitive to me and I, I couldn't get into it now a game that I did really get into that I didn't expect to get into is a game called Uninvited and the music and ambiance that this game creates as well as the death scenes and the story truly are horrific. If they were to make a modern version of this game, a lot of people would be streaming it and would be extremely scared of this game. But it's not so scary because we're looking at an 8-bit version on the NES. This was a port of a PC game, and it follows a series that... Um, I'm not as big of a fan of Shadowgate or Deja Vu, but uh, something about this game really resonates with me, and I think it's because it, the just the horror element of this game and the mood that it sets with the music. Um, now, now some of the screens when you get stuck on them, the music isn't great, but it it does have a lot of really good uh, music, and it totally sets the atmosphere incredibly well. Uh, for an NES game. Monster Party. Here's one that I almost forgot about, but it's in here because I know you guys would be giving me shit in the comments below if I didn't include it. Um, it's a fun game. You play as a little boy with a baseball bat and you're smacking around what looks like some burglars and some different monster creatures and some legs sticking out of the ground in the first stage and then like fish people later on. And then what you can also do is go into like this nightmare world where things just look a little bit more creepier and you could transform into a dragon uh, that has a little bit of a flying ability and can shoot, I guess, fire projectiles uh, at the enemies. This one's a lot of fun and it's not that hard to find either. So you might want to consider picking it up. It also uh, parodies some different monsters and movie references, and it really is just this weird game. Now, I've never played all the way through this one, but I got some decent footage here for you to check out of the game. Ghostbusters 2, the Famicom version, is what I'm going to talk about here because it is phenomenal. You can play as all of the Ghostbusters in this game. It's a top-down view. One Ghostbuster goes around zapping the ghosts, the other Ghostbuster comes alongside, you control them uh, with the B button, and then they will uh, scoop the ghosts up into a ghost trap, and you move throughout the stages with the ghost trap uh, Ghostbuster following you uh, as your lead Ghostbuster with their uh, proton blaster uh, shooting various enemies, which include uh, Slimer, and many other uh, ghosts, uh, including I think like the jogging ghost was in there. Uh, 
familiar scenes from the movie and it follows along the lines of the movie you know where they're going down into the sewer looking for ooze they're in the courtroom um and it it just follows that story really well uh this one's a great game very playable so much better than the other two ghostbusters that we received i don't understand why we didn't get this one here in north america please consider checking out all of these games if you haven't and subscribing to player's guide because one small click from you makes a big difference to the channel and if you're a retro gamer or video game collector this is a channel i think you will enjoy being subscribed to you can also find player's guide on twitch twitter instagram and if you're looking for a retro gaming and video game collecting community to join consider joining the player's guide discord all of these are linked below until next time happy halloween I'll catch you on the flip side.